Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Love is overrated, we know that. You know, love is an invention of the 1500s. It's uh, from another time in history. Love is a fantasy. It's, it's an imaginary thing now that has nothing to do with what I'm about to say, but I thought I'd attract your attention by talking about love. Because I just love the way this government refuses to invoke, uh, let us say, ID for voting. They say it's racist to require ID for voting. And we rely upon such intellectual giants uh, for that opinion as Al Sharpton, the street radical, Barack Obama, the community organizer, Eric Holder, the uh, superb and supreme Ayatollah of all laws, tell us that in order to vote in America, you n need not have any ID. In fact, in order to have ID, if you have ID, you're actually un-American. But how do they do it in Mexico? I mean, they bend over backwards to make sure that illegal aliens can vote in America, don't they? They want to make sure that every vote counts from an illegal alien from China or Mexico. So let's look at how voting in Mexico works. To vote in Mexico, every eligible Mexican has to have a tamper-proof photo ID card with a thumbprint and an embossed hologram. I guess that's racist. Ah, uh, hold it. To vote in Mexico, all citizens are required to personally enroll and show proof of birth or citizenship. I guess that's racist. To vote in Mexico, applicants are required to personally return to collect their voting credential. I guess that would be racist. And I would like to know is why we can't upgrade to Mexican voting standards without being called racist. Maybe it's because one potential party is dependent on voter fraud. The party of John Stewart and Bill Maher, the party of Al Sharpton and Barack Obama, the party that gave us the deaths and murders and everything else that we're seeing in this country, not tied to illegal aliens, of course, the party that refused to call, refuses to call Islamic extremism Islamic. You get the picture. I don't have to fill in the details. The same party is pushing climate psychosis. Jerry Brown, who pushed through a railway to nowhere at the cost of billions of dollars, a scam beyond scams, uh, a high-speed rail in the middle of the most fertile farmland in the world, in the middle of California, was pushed through by Jerry Brown, and he's concerned about climate change. The same Jerry Brown who is meeting the Pope, hobnobbing with the Pope, flying there, of course, not on a banana skin, uh, but on a jet plane. You see, everything is good for them and everything is bad for the rest of us. He gave a speech at the Vatican, Jerry Brown did, saying that we're talking about extinction. This is beyond comprehension. And of course the Pope is another liar about the climate. I know you don't want to believe men can lie who are wrapped in the holy cloth of the Holy See, but he's a liar. The Pope is a bona fide liar, a bona fide Marxist. Governor Brown is a bona fide liar, a bona fide Marxist. He gave a speech at the Vatican that I'm going to play for you that your hair will stand up when you listen to it, especially, especially when you realize he's building a railway to nowhere that costs billions of dollars. And by the way, if you're a fan of television and you watch the series I like a lot called True Detective, it's about a politician who was behind a railway in the middle of the farmland of California around which fortunes will be made in California all over again by buying up parcels of land where the railway is going to go before it's built. Now, what is this? Is this uh, art imitating life or was it life imitating art? Or is it Jerry Brown is one of the most, well, let it go with that. What do I have to characterize him as? We know what he is. He's a double talking phony. I mean, one day we'll be able to go to a museum in the middle of the desert, someone wrote, and look at liberals and dinosaurs at the same time. Both will be extinct, and both will be a classical case of studying what well, you get the picture. And here's Jerry Brown, the man who almost single-handedly engineered the drought by stopping the construction of dams and reservoirs. Yeah, he almost caused the, the drought we're living through. He stopped the construction of dams and reservoirs because the, 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 the Lilliputians, the microcephalics, really, in Sacramento, 
who have degrees from Caltech and Cal Poly and you see this and you see that. How come they get these degrees from UC and they can't see anything? That's what I want to know. They have engineering degrees, technology degrees, science degrees from UC and they can't see anything. Does this state pride itself on having idiots run everything? Is this the same Jerry Brown and Pope, uh, Pope Francis that I'm talking about? Ah, yes, Jerry Brown. We're all going to go extinct unless we follow what the atheists tell us. Here is the atheist Jerry Brown mocking God by kissing up to the Pope on only one issue. Here is a man who has spit at religion his entire political career, trampled on the Bible, stepped on religion, mocked the religious, made the fundamentalist Christians what they're not. Now all of a sudden he's embracing religion because he finally has a phony pope who is pushing the leftist agenda. How come he doesn't talk about Planned Parenthood and all the dead children? And by the way, right after O'Brown uh, gave his speech, he climbed back into his limousine, which took him to his private jets, which flew him to his climate-controlled hotel room, which took him to his limousine, so him and his wife can go around Italy right now and crank the air conditioning down to 68 degrees in the limo because it's very hot in Europe right now. And by the way, the $97 billion high-speed rail, write the number down. Jerry Brown, concerned about so-called global warming, saying, saying that not only all the science is in, but the world's going to come to an end. Actually come to an end. We're going to be extinct. Unless we understand that the $97 billion high-speed rail is completed. He gave driver's licenses to illegals. He created transgender bathrooms. He has uh, put a check mark next to sanctuary cities. And now he has a special message from God that the world will come to an end unless we give him another trillion dollars for the global warming scam. There's been no global warming in 18 years. We're heading into a cooling period. And now he's trying to push it into a religious uh, form. Do we have that on sound? We do. We have the soundbite of Jerry Brown. It's in clip number two. Climate warning. We're talking about extinction. He climbed out of his private jet to give us this talk right now on the Savage Nation. We know the problem. Yes, there's uncertainties, but we don't even know how far we've gone or if we've gone over the edge. There are tipping points, feedback uh, loops. This is not some linear set of problems that we can predict. Big uh, we there. have to take uh, measures against an uncertain future, right, which right, right. may well be something no one ever wants. We are talking about extinction. We're talking about uh, climate regimes that has not, have not been seen for tens of millions of years. We're not there yet, but we're on our way. And there's an element of irreversibility that requires that we imagine down the road, in the future, and then react. Wow. A lot of big words there for all of the television uh, comedians. I mean, Bill Maher will have to look some of those up in between drinking at the uh, the hotel down there on Sunset Boulevard. He's going to have to have someone translate some of those words that uh, Jerry Brown just gave out. And not to be outdone on climate is the great climatologist Al Sharpton. You didn't know this, but in between changing his looks from a fat street agitator to a skinny, well, fill in the blank. From a fat street agitator with a megaphone, he is now an expert on climate. Listen to clip 16. This could not be created. Nobody could make this up. It is not created by the savage nation. I want you to listen to how far the world has fallen that a man of such low education and such low appeal would be invited into the White House a hundred times tells you only one thing. Birds of a feather flock together. Listen to old Al Sharpton on climate. For me and many of the champions that you will see today, it <laughs> is an issue of justice and it is an issue of human rights. Uh, African Americans yeah, yeah. are at a higher Ooh. risk Ooh. of being uh, close or predisposed <laughs> to areas of, of carbon uh, as well as other poisonous <laughs> pollution in the air. And we have a oh, disproportionate yes, interest because oh, we suffer disproportionately. Oh, my God. 
if this kid was in my seventh grade science class, when I was teaching seventh grade science, I would leave him back and say that, look, he has to go back to the first grade because he can't compose an entire sentence. We can't push him to the eighth grade because it'll be an embarrassment to himself the rest of his life. Instead, he was pushed forward to the point where he's so smart on issues of science and engineering that Barack Obama invited him into the White House to advise him on science and engineering. All right, that's the opening to the show, 855-407-282. And for those of you who need a little bit more uh, reality about the friendly Muslims amongst us in our midst, let's listen to a moderate cleric who once was in charge of Boston mosques who 10 years ago tried to warn the government about a radical shift at two of these mosques he led for decades and what the radicals in his mosque did to him. He was thrown out by a local doctor and his son joined ISIS. Did you hear what I just said? And the federal government under George Bush refused to act against the radicalization going on in that mosque in Boston. Just as today, they refused to say under the Obama administration, that Islam is connected to terrorism. If radical Muslims are being supported by a radical government, while even moderate Muslims are trying to sound the alarm bell, we are all in danger. And oh, by the way, remember those Marines who were killed in the distant past of last week at a recruiting center and the one sailor killed by a Muslim? Remember that? You know why they were killed, don't you? Because Bill Clinton took away their weapons. Bill Clinton disarmed all of the military personnel uh, on bases around America. It's an old story that I broke years ago, by the way. And you want to hear the upshot of that? Members of militias are now, armed members of militias are now guarding recruiting centers in some southern states because this failed, rotten, stinking government will not protect our own military men at recruiting centers. Armed citizens are sitting outside on lawn chairs to do the job this rotten, stinking, corrupt communist government will not do to protect our military. That is how far we have fallen under the community organizer who is working around the clock to disassociate America from its greatness. I'll be right back. I'm Michael Savage. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. This song does not apply to Barack Obama. I made up my mind. He is the former, not the latter. Now, why do I say he's acting like the devil? This is not a matter of uh, opinion anymore. Anyone who has an IQ above that of Bill Maher or that other guy on television with a fake name who uh, donates to the White House and then gets him on the show, one a million dollars? A TV, a TV uh, jester offers him a million dollars. Then he has him on the show to, spew, to spin his lies. I forget the other guy's name. I really do. The one from Kew Gardens. I can't remember his name. What's his name? Yeah, John Stowitzki, whatever his name is. I'm convinced that these are the men. I'm going to say something that's so offensive that I hope it reaches them. I hope one of their in-laws hears it. I hope one of John Stewart's in-laws who hates him tells him what I'm about to say. You know, they have families. So you figure someone in the family hates him. The same with Bill Maher. Someone in the family may hate him. So, But what I'm about to say, write it down and tell him. In uh, the concentration camps, it's a sensitive topic. They used fellow Jews to beat people into the gas chambers. Did you know that? And they were lo mainly lawyers. I'm not making this up. They gave them truncheons, and they were the ones, the Judenrats, who beat people into, the, into submission if they wouldn't comply. There was another class of wonderful human being, and uh, Jerry Lewis once did such a movie and then withdrew the movie. It was too painful for him. It was about Jewish, a Jewish comedian in the 30s who was forced by the Nazis to entertain Jewish children as they were led into the gas chamber to their deaths. And they told him either you're going to perform and entertain the children or you're, we're going to kill you and your whole family. And it tore the, tore the uh, comedian up. That's who these comedians remind me of. Did you hear what I just said? It's a profound statement. 
They know better. They're not that stoned. They're not that sick. Let me give you a few examples. Thousands of violent felons about to be released in November under new sentencing guidelines by Barack Obama. And these will include inmates with violent crimes uh, on their records, including assault, firearms, and even murder. So Chairman Bob Goodlatte and Senator and Committee Chairman Chuck Grassley sent a letter to so-called Attorney General Loretta Lynch. I call her so-called because she was picked from the New York court system by none other than the street radical Al Sharpton to be Attorney General. To give you some idea of how far this company is, country has fallen, they pick a woman of her low ilk, Loretta Lynch. Al Sharpton picked her. Asking for more information about these inmates including a history of offenses for each offender projected release date. Meanwhile, the sanctuary cities go marching on. Sanctuary cities go marching on. Can you believe this? How about the many lies paving the way to Obama's legacy by Robert Ehrlich Jr. National Review? Here's what he said about the Iranian threat to Israel. The danger from Iran is grave. It is real, and my goal will be to eliminate this threat. I will always keep the threat of military action on the table to defend our security and our ally Israel. That was then, this is now. On health care, he said, if you like your doctor, you can keep your doctor. If you like your health care plan, you can keep your health care plan. On capitalism, Obama said, if you've got a business, you didn't build that. Somebody else made that happen. On religious freedom, let's honor the conscience of those who disagree with abortion and draft a sensible conscience clause and make sure, well, you get the picture. Yeah. I made up my mind. It's not devil or angel. He's flooding America with third world individuals who are not even wanted in their own country. For what reason? Figure out why he's doing that. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. America is being overrun by the flotsam of the third world who are being given the... Welcome that, while real Americans, the middle class, who pay the bills, are being given the exit map by Obama. We sit here trying to stop this, this flow, this backwards flow. It was a great article on the attack on the middle class, which I've been pointing out for years. You don't seem to understand why <clears throat> leftists like Obama... Mayor uh, de Blasio of New York attacked the middle class. And the answer is because it's part of the protocols of communism and Bolshevism to attack the bourgeoisie. You agitate the poor, you take money from the rich, and you attack the middle class. And they use phrases such as climate change, income inequality, to attack the largest segment of the population. Now they find the fellow traveler, some obscure Argentinian preacher, they turn him into the Pope, and he spews the same garbage and wraps it in Jesus. You hear this? The great article on this. May or know-it-all could use a lesson in humility by Michael Goodwin of the New York Post. He writes this. The lefty mayor traveled to the Vatican to meet the lefty Pope yesterday, but failed to learn anything new. Had Bill de Blasio done his homework, he would have copied Pope Francis's recent confession that he, the pontiff, was wrong to ignore the middle class. Asked during his down with capitalism trip to Latin America why he rarely speaks about the working, tax-paying middle class, the Pope reflected a humility that would be shocking if it came from Mayor Know-it-all. You're right, Francis admitted. It's an error of mine not to think about this. Bill de Blasio, he writes, pay attention. Instead, the mayor is so hell-bent on treating and beating to death the income inequality, the climate change spiel, that he forgets the middle class is in the middle for a reason. It's the largest segment of the population. The Pope noticed that the middle is shrinking. And perhaps one day he'll also come to realize that the progressive policies, he and de Blasio and Obama for that matter, are a big reason why. Soak the rich nostrums, coupled with invitations for the poor to sign up for permanent government dependency, hurt everyone except the ruling class. Do you understand who the middle class is? That's you. You're an investor. You believe that you will gain benefits by working hard and delaying gratification. Doesn't matter what your race is. You're practicing the Protestant work ethic. 
which formed the backbone of American capitalism. Michael Goodwin writes, the middle class works for a living, pays its own way, and raises children to be good students and law-abiding citizens. The middle class make good neighbors and stable communities and struggle up life's hills without undue complaints or demands for the fruit of others' labor. Naturally, de Blasio and Obama and Jerry Brown ignores them when he isn't undermining them. They are irrelevant to his vision or their vision where government commands the heights and presides over redistribution schemes that despite good intentions never lift the poor. As historian Fred Siegel says, liberals want to deregulate morals and regulate everything else. That's why they demonize cops. That's why they order cops to cut down on aggressive policing. That's why they force schools to stop suspending disruptive students based on race. And then they take bad behavior and they endorse it as normal. While those of you who raise children to behave normally start to wonder why you're playing by the rules. That's what's going, that's what's going on in America right now. And it's not a joke. It's a very serious problem that we're having. So what do you think is Obama's motive? Why does he, why does he so intently, after he's gotten every one of his, uh, he's got his whole list, basically, except seizing guns. There's almost nothing left for him to do. Let's see, gay marriage, check. Socialized medicine, check. Spying on citizens without retribution, check. Uh, uh, using the IRS to attack political opponents, check. Neutralizing the Republican Party, check. Putting fear in the hearts of all citizens in America while liberating the Iranians to develop a nuclear weapon, check. Spitting on Israel, check. Marginalizing the Jewish vote in America, by making a mockery of the Jewish vote in America, which was once staunchly in favor of Israel's survival, still collecting a fortune from AIPAC, still collecting a fortune from Jewish donors, while attacking the sacred cow of Jewish voters called Israel. No one else could have achieved this other than Barry from Honolulu. Nobody could have done this, and yet he did it and he won't stop. Why is he doing it? Let's take some calls on that great question. Mike on WBAP in Dallas. Why is he doing this? Uh, it's it's hate-filled uh, retribution, and hate consumes all, ultimately. It knows no end. Uh, nothing is going to... Wait, wait, well, let, let me be clear what I'm asking here. You mean Obama has a hatred for America? Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. And everything American. That's what... Well, why? Why? His mother was from America. His father, is funny. His father was from Kenya. His adopted father was from Indonesia. They were both Muslims, but the mother was American. Why does he hate America? Uh, for the obvious reasons, for Americanism, for capitalism, for uh, culturalism. All yeah, but wait a minute. He, he goes to L.A. and New York, wherever he goes. He only associates with, associates with billionaires. He goes to the homes of the richest people in the world to shake them down for money. So how does that jive with his hatred for capitalism? hypocrite he's a hate-filled hypocrite absolutely yes absolutely and he well it's like it's like jerry brown hypocrite hypocrite flies to italy goes in a uh, air-conditioned limo air-conditioned hotel and lectures about the end of the world from climate change and he believes in his dogma that's the other thing he believes in what he's doing he doesn't doubt himself he doesn't doubt his motivations he doesn't doubt uh, that the end result is being just and in his mind what ought to occur. He has no doubt. That's why he doesn't falter in any of his motivational and, and any of his moves. He falters never. Like, so why is, he, why is he such a true believer? How has doubt not crept into his mind when doubt enters all reasonable men's minds? You know, even Albert Einstein, one of the greatest geniuses of all time, said that he took the opposite opinion of all of his theories and tried to prove them correct in order to prove his theory correct. Why doesn't Obama take that approach? <laughs> There's As an I answer say, to that because he's about the most insecure hater in the history of the presidency. He won't even permit a question to be asked about what he is doing and the results of what he is doing. He is a man who has had everything given to him from childhood. He never worked a day in his life. Do you know that? You know the man never washed a dish? He's never been a member of the working class. Everything was 
was uh, sentenced. In, let's just say the skids were greased for him. You know, he went to a very expensive boarding school in Hawaii called Punahou. Who do you think paid for that? It's revenge, man. <laughs> Hate-filled revenge. Revenge for what? He had, a, he had a very spoiled life. What does he have revenge for? The downtrodden are, are the taken advantage of, are the straight-up ripped off. So here's the thing that you got to know. I read his autobiography. In his autobiography, he said he never identified as a radical black when he was a, a, a youth in Hawaii. He never thought about that. He said it was only when he went to Columbia. Remember, at Occidental College, he was still an average American kid. Smoked dope, drank, ran out, or chased women. He said it was only when he went to that left-wing university, New York, Columbia University, and he grew his hair out, and he started hanging around with the white communists and the black radicals, he said only then did he start identifying with the radical image. And he said he got tremendous respect for it. And look how far it's catapulted him. Take a look at what hatred has done for Al Sharpton. Take a look at what hatred has done for Barack Obama. Take a look at what hatred has done for Eric Holder. Take a look at what hatred has done for Loretta Lynch. They ride the horse of hatred. And anyone who criticizes them is immediately jumped on by the Stooges, John Stewart, Bill Maher. And they're just representatives, by the way, of the government media complex. I've called them government jesters for years because they're paid jesters. They're servants of the government, disguised as independent comedians. So <clears throat> this is what they do. And that's why it's going to I'm going to come back to Trump now. That's why everyone loves Trump. And that's why the left fears Trump. At last, a man has stood up. A man has stood up on his hind legs and said, you know what? Drop dead. You don't like what I'm saying? Drop dead again. You still don't like what I'm saying? Drop dead again. Because I'm going to say it over and over again. I'm going to say it like it is. And if I'm wrong once in a while, drop dead again. And if you don't like what I'm saying, drop dead again. And I'll say what I believe to be true. And if I make some mistakes, screw you if you don't like it. America has been waiting for an American man to stand up and take on the venomous left. More specifically, we need a man to stand up to the radical Muslims amongst us and clean them out of the rat's nests before they kill more soldiers, Marines, or airmen or in sailors and recruiting centers. So you understand exactly what needs to be done. And I'm not so sure Trump's not going to go all the way. Many, oh, he's not going to go all the way. No, no, no. Oh, he's just a flash in the pan. Oh, he's going to embarrass the Republican Party. Oh, he's part of the clown show. You keep saying it. Just keep saying it. Yeah, I'll tell you who hates Trump. The illegitimate left. And, of course, the illegal aliens are terrified that he'll crack down on them, as he should. Et cetera. I go down the list. After Tennessee shootings, armed citizens guard recruiters. Remember the Muslim who killed the recruiters because they were not armed, because Bill Clinton had disarmed the military on, uh, on our bases? There are now members of militias guarding military recruiting centers around the country after four Marines and a sailor were gunned down in cold blood by the Muslim. Did you know that? Regular guys. Regular guys sitting there with guns, waiting for the uh, Muslims to show up, like they did at, a, at Pamela Geller's event, and blow them to Allah land. They're not afraid of them. They're doing what the government won't do. Now here, you're not going to believe what I'm about to read you. Pentagon does not support arming all military personnel, Spokesmouth says. Speaking to reporters Wednesday, Department of Defense Spokesmouth, Captain Jeff Davis reiterated the existing department policy of not supporting arming all military personnel. Davis said, we do not support arming all military personnel. And then the U.S. Marine Corps, which has been deballed by Obama, said, while we greatly appreciate the support of the American public during this tragedy, we ask that citizens do not stand guard at our recruiting centers. Our continued public trust lies among our trained first responders. First responders, you idiot, you. How'd that work out for the four Marines? They're dead, you schmuck. Where were the first responders after they were dead? They showed up and shot them. Well, you get the picture.
And that's all because of the community organizer, the hateful community organizer, the undermining hateful community organizer, the undermining hateful, well, how many different ways can I spell it out for you? If we had a legitimate government, he would have been stopped a long time ago. He would have been impeached years ago. And I tried to warn you when I wrote Stop the Coming Civil War, what, was, what this guy was going to do to us, and I'm warning you. See, there's a thing, there's a, there's a theorem in mathematics that I applied to George Bush in the last months of his reign of terror. And I warned that George Bush was so discombobulated from reality, and I said there are three months more to go, it was around this time of the year, July or August, I was on the radio, I said, watch out for Bush, he's got about six months to go. And I said, he, if you think he's bad now, and he was, he was, I called him a fiscal socialist. All of my Republican listeners stopped listening to me. They said, how dare you call George Bush a fiscal socialist? Well, at that point, he had already uh, outspent the previous four administrations by bloating the federal government that large. I said, watch out what's coming. And what happened was, Bush then blew out the whole economy and paved the way for Obama, remember? Well, I'm telling you what's gonna happen now. Between now and when this guy, Barry from Hawaii, leaves office, if he ever does, by the way, if Barry ever leaves office, he's gonna ratchet up his attacks. It's kind of a permutation and combination theory of mathematics. It's magnifying itself. It's moving faster. You understand what I'm saying to you? Okay, I've had my say. It's your turn. It's 855 4728. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855 400 Savage. 855 400 7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800 B U Y C O I N. Ayatollah Obama really gets me sick. Right. Ayatollah Obama gets me sick, actually. His hatred for America is so overwhelming. It literally seethes out of him. But he, he's so smooth in how he delivers it that the government gestures eat it up. In the next hour, we're going to have a young lady, 22 years old, by the name of Tommy Laren, both live and on tape on this show. Remember I ran a, God, it's 50 seconds. I need five minutes right now, not 50 seconds. I'll do it in 14 seconds. The Savage Scholarships, $100,000, 20000 to each of five winners. Remember that? I told you have faith in the young. They're not brainwashed by, by Ayatollah Obama. Well, there's a young lady named Tommy Laren, 22 years old, who did a complete two-minute piece on the One American News Network about Obama's halfway effort in his fight against terrorism that is so unbelievable, she blows away all of the leg crossers on Fox News. Watch out, Martha Washington. Watch out, Martha Washington. Here comes your replacement. Wait until you hear her and wait until you listen to her live and on tape. And you'll have hope that not all the youth are buying the lie. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Take time out from uh, the rock and roll to hit you between the legs. Ayatollah Obama has just put out a missive saying he plans more executive orders on immigration. You heard me. He just said he's going to put out more executive orders to flood America with more third worlders. Proposed rule expands number of illegal aliens allowed to stay in the country. It came out minutes before the show started on freebeacon.com by Elizabeth Harrington. It's on the top of the Drudge Report. 
Ayatollah Obama is moving forward with plans to expand the waiver program that will allow additional illegal aliens to remain in the country rather than apply for legal status from abroad. The Department of Homeland Insecurity under Jed Johnson, the radical leftist lawyer from Wall Street, issued a proposed rule today. Well, I, I don't want to read it to you. But the waiver is going to go so far beyond dreamers and parents and children you're not going to believe the other categories of illegals beyond those with citizens, spouses, and parents that Ayatollah Obama is going to permit to soil our nation. Are you ready for them? Such aliens will include family-sponsored immigrants, employment-based immigrants. That means uh, that Facebook, Microsoft, and others can get all of the Indians that they want for 50 cents on the dollar. So he's paying back uh, the visits to Silicon Valley. Certain special immigrants, I don't know who they be, maybe drug dealers, who pay enough money. Wait, it gets better. And diversity visa program selectees. That means no white men. What does a diversity visa program mean? Anyone but a white man. Anyone but a European. Together with their derivative spouses and children. That will allow the illegal aliens that he's picking to stay in the nation while they wait visas and blah, 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 blah. No opposition from the Republicans, none. Can you believe this? Can you believe what he's doing before the election and why he's doing it? Why is he doing this? Why is he doing this to the United States of America? There's one reason. There's only one reason for it. Well, there's actually a few reasons. One is psychological, one is political, uh, and one is financial. Let's start with the financial reasons that he's doubling down on amnesty in the spite of the, n the number of people killed by illegal aliens. Do I have to name them? You heard the heartbreaking testimony yesterday before Congress of people whose children have been mutilated and murdered by illegal aliens. Didn't make it to the, uh, to the, uh, to the television. He doubles down. Why? Why is he in such a rush to change the demographics of America? from a white majority to something else. L let's lay it on the line. I know many of you don't even want to look at this. You're very uncomfortable with it because you've been so successfully brainwashed that you won't even analyze what he's actually doing. If he's taking in almost no European immigrants, and I mean European of Caucasian background, I'll make it very, very clear, but instead wanting to change the demographics of almost every city and state that he can get his hands on before leaving office. Why is he doing it? Well, the question is pregnant with the answer. You don't even have to say why. Well, well, yeah, I mean, you would be a genius to figure it out. It's in order to make sure. Look, I figured this out. I swear to you. It's been so clear to me what he's doing, why he's doing it. The man's animosity and malevolence to America is so overwhelming that it oozes out of everything he says. But why is he doing it? Isn't he happy with gay marriage? Isn't he happy with everything else he's done? No. No, that's just the beginning for him. There's a mania here, a, a, a mania that is hard to comprehend that anyone would be on such a war path against the nation that gave him so much. I try to warn, it, warn you about it and stop the coming civil war. And in uh, October, my biggest and last nonfiction book will be out entitled Government Zero. It's on Amazon. It's not ready to be sold. I'm mentioning it to you because this is where it's, it's all there, Government Zero. Government, government Zero, Government Zero, Government Zero, Government Zero. Now, why do I call it Government Zero? Do you remember the Ebola epidemic of last year? Remember there was a patient zero who started the whole epidemic? Do you remember that? Remember that? One man, one person? Well, that's why I call it government zero. One man is destroying America. One man is this bulldozer wrecking everything that was built up before him as fast as he can. It's as though he's tearing up the transcontinental railroad, ripping it out track by track, and he doesn't know what he's replacing it with. He just has the, the demonic vision. Oh, just get rid of the hegemony of the white man and everything will be good. In other words, that's the entire litany that goes on in this man's head. This is the leftist's mantra for 40 straight years. It comes out of the protocols of the feminist movement. 
It comes out of the mouth of uh, radicals like Bill Ayers. It comes out of the mouth of so many of those hateful, hateful people that are killing us. <clears throat> Mick Jagger, Rolling Stone, Sympathy for the Devil. Anyone but the good people. Anyone but the working class. Anyone but the middle class. Anyone but those who respect the law. Bring it all down, girl. Bring it all down, girl. Now, you say, well, why is he doing it? Because he wants to remake America so it becomes very much like any other third world nation. And therefore, it will be easily squashed by the New World Order elites who want to run the world. We will no longer be able to stand up to the bureaucrats in Brussels or wherever they house themselves. Maybe they'll be in the Vatican next. We don't know where they'll be next. They could be hiding in the Vatican next for all we know. And uh, right now there's a hardened American that will not stand for this. Armed to the teeth. And I predict he's going to go after the guns before this is over. I predict it as sure as I'm sitting here. He will use any pretext he can to take away the Second Amendment. You wait and see. That's going to be, that's going to be the sin qua non of all battles. I'm not going to talk about Government Zero right now. I'm just alerting you to the fact that I've studied this for a long time. To me, it's no longer speculation. It's as clear as anything can be. And I'm not reading a crystal ball. If you ask yourself, well, how do you prove a thing like that? Simple. Look at, look at his actions. Who is he aiming them at? Who is he aiming his actions at? Why is he doing this? Why does he hate America, which has given him so much? And why is he such a hypocrite? Why does his wife have such hypocrisy that she travels the world on shopping trips and then lectures us about the evils of America? Why does she go all over the world uh, and talk about girls and women and this and that, goes to a Muslim school in London and it says, I see myself in you? What is she talking about? What are they after here? It reminds me of the New Yorker cartoon that appeared in 2008 and it caused a lot of embarrassment for the New Yorker magazine. Their front cover, I'll never forget it as long as I live. They were running for office, the Obamas were. And uh, there was a cartoon on the cover of the New Yorker that showed Michelle Obama with a bandolier of ammunition over her, uh, looking like Angela Davis. And they cart the cartoonist made Obama look like one of the 60s radicals, Stokely Carmichael, one of them, I don't know who. And they, they meant to be sarcastic. They were saying this is how the, the average white American sees them. Unfortunately for them, it was, it was so, it's so predictive, it's frightening. It's as though Angela Davis and Stokely Carmichael are in the White House. There's no difference in the policies we're seeing and that of the Black Panther Party of the 60s, by the way. And you're saying, well, it's not, can't be a duplicate. Of course not. This is a big nation. You can't bring it down in only seven years or six years, whatever it's been, under this reign of terror. After all, there's still people and there's still a Congress you have to play with. The media has been in his pocket a long time. We don't have to go down that one. So, you know, he's got a lot of work left. A lot of work to bring it all down, man. If it feels good, do it in the road. Why not do it in the road? So, look, I don't want to turn this into only about him. I think what I want to do is talk about the fact that I'm not alone. If I was alone in my viewpoint, I would have been off the air a long time ago. They'd say, hey, he's crazy, he's a kook. That's what they're saying about Trump. For 21 years, I have put up with that, that garbage that I'm not part of the mainstream. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm a hater. I'm a racist. I heard it all. I had the dreamers boycotting a station of mine in San Francisco because I stood up to the rabble. I've had it 21 years of it. Everyone in radio has had it. I've had it more than others. Now Trump stands up to the mob. He's getting it. But the people know what's going on. Say, well, you're alone. No, we're not alone. We're the majority. We're actually the majority. We are the majority, which is why Obama's working so hard to change that. Do you get it? He knows what the majority is and what it wants. You think he's stupid? You think the sorority are, are idiotic? The sorority knows what we the people are, what we're made of and what we want. That's why the sorority is flooding America with third world flotsam as fast as they can. That's why devils like those in Silicon Valley will throw IT workers in the gutter to bring in Indians who work for half the wages and call it diversity. Do you understand the greed and the insanity of these people? There are parallels in human history. 
of what is going on with regard to the demographic shift that Obama is single-handedly causing through his insane immigration policies, but they've only occurred after a nation had been conquered in war and flooded with the conquering army. Write that down. Because the only time in history this has ever happened before is after a nation had been overrun, uh, conquered militarily and overrun, and then the demographics changed. Did you know that? No nation on earth permits this. How about the diverse nation of China? Are they permitting a flood of third world immigrants into China? Where would that be? They're a member of uh, the, the selected minority esteemed in uh, the leftist uh, books, aren't they? The Chinese are superior to us in every way. How come they don't have diversity? Well, how about Japan? Aren't they on the list of approved minorities to the radical left? How does Japan deal with immigration? Or well, let's not go further than Mexico. How are they doing on that? University of Mexico. You know what they do to people from Guatemala who sneak in? Have you looked into what they do to people from El Salvador who sneak in? Have you looked at what they do to people from the Honduras who sneak in? Have you seen how they treat diversity in Mexico? We're the only moronic nation made of marshmallows. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Four United States Marines are now dead. Climate change didn't kill them. Lack of free community college didn't kill them. The income gap, wage inequality, nope, not those things either. Gay marriage, nope. Oh, white racism, not that either. So what did? President Obama, if you won't say it, I will. Radical Islam. This is not workplace violence. This is not a criminal act with motives unknown. This is terrorism. The suspected shooter, Mohammed Abdulaziz, a devout Muslim. Do I care that he seemed like an all-American young man? Do I care that he was good at mixed martial arts or a smart, quiet guy? Do I care that his high school friends wouldn't classify him as overly religious? No, I don't give a flying you-know-what about any of that. Was he linked to ISIS or Al-Qaeda or Hamas or any of the other 15 plus offshoot terrorist groups? Does it matter? I'm sorry, but radical Islam is becoming the rule, not the exception. Yesterday's moderate is today's terrorist. All I right, you're listening to a 22-year-old young lady named Tommy Laren, and she has a, a little TV show from San Diego at One America News Network, 22 years old. She created a new breed of political talk, 22 years old. And she comes from a military family. And she grew up in Rapid City, South Dakota. And she credits her love of politics to family dinners centered around the news of the day. And she's going to be with us soon after the bottom of the hour. Because I watched the video. I was stunned by it. She created this on her own. 22 years old. There's hope for America. Believe me. She knows what's going on. She's not alone. She's extremely articulate. And Martha Washington better watch her back. Martha better watch her back. 855-407-282. Larry on WABC. What's on your mind, Larry? Fire away. Oh, th thanks, uh, Dr. Savage. Do you think reasonable Democrats, like a guy like Chuck Schumer, he's a reasonable guy. Do you think in his heart of hearts, he's behind what you're just talking about now about you know, immigration and so on. Could he really believe that this is a good thing? I think you don't understand things about fellows like Chuck Schumer. They're not reasonable. They're Machiavellian. They're in it only for one thing, and that's self-aggrandizement and power. They pretend that they're reasonable. Doesn't Obama pretend to be reasonable? Does he look like a flaming radical? Has he ever shown any examples of it in his persona or his delivery? Never. He never yells. He never screams. He never loses control. He's the most skilled performer in the history of radicalism, which is why he is where he is. And Schumer is simply in it for his own self-aggrandizement. Now, you say, well, wait a minute. This thing about nukes for Iran, it seems to all be in the hands of Chuck Schumer right now. Didn't they say he's one of the top Democrats and he's so pro-Israel they've got to get him aboard, right? right? Right or wrong? Am I right about that, Larry? You're, you're right, you're right. Wait, wait, wait. So they're trying to get Schumer aboard. Now, let me ask you something. If you take my opinion of Schumer that he's Machiavellian and only looking for his own advancement, 
What would Schumer be negotiating for right now to go to Obama and say, even though I've supported Israel all my life because I've rolled in the dough from AIPAC, I'm ready to throw Israel overboard if you'll give me X. What would that be? What would Schumer want? He's one of the most powerful senators in, 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 the, in the Senate. What could he possibly want? It's, it's a great question. I, 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 have I, the, I have the answer. I'm a know-it-all. I'll give you the answer. I was a know-it-all before I met Donald Trump. Here is the answer. Schumer has long been known to have wanted to be on the U.S. Supreme Court. He's always wanted to be the first uh, a member of the U.S. Supreme Court uh, from his uh, period or from that, his area of Brooklyn. I don't know where it was, but he wants to be on the Supreme Court. Now you say, well, there are no vacancies. Yeah, but there's a few old people. I mean, Ruth Bader Ginsburg's an old lady. God bless her. I hope she lives to the age of Methuselah. But she's had cancer for years and she's very old. Schumer wants to be promised a Supreme Court appointment would be my guess, Larry. And so, no, there is no such thing as a reasonable Democrat. They're all part and parcel of the same Democrat, socialist, Islamist block that is killing us. End of my humble opinion. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. I care that this SOB killed four of our United States Marines, and I care that our Commander-in-Chief is more concerned with Muslim sensitivity than the honor and sacrifice made by these Marines. Now, this is the 21st time our military men and women have been attacked here at home. This is not a Middle East problem. This is an American problem, and I'm sorry, but I can't sit here and let this go. Not anymore. I come from a family of Marines. My grandpa was a World War II paratrooper. My uncle, a Vietnam Purple Heart recipient. My cousins, both Marine Corps officers. I have some very close Navy SEAL connections as well. In fact, someone very close to my heart is deployed to the Middle East right now. But the sad thing is, I was telling him last night, I think you're safer over there than you would be right here in the United States of America. I've had it with this failed strategy, this halfway, half-baked, tiptoe, be friendly to jihadis mentality pushed by this administration. Be a leader, someone. They, the radical Islamists, have brought the fight right here to the red, white, and blue, and it's about time we bring it to them, full force. Right Let's on! Show what the United States of America looks like up close and personal. Show them what a B-1 bomber looks like flying overhead. <laughs> Show them what they're messing with. Put the fear of God in their desert, because clearly our lack of strategy isn't working. 22 years old, Tommy Laren. She has a little television show in uh, San Diego. It went viral. Two million uh, hits, maybe more by now. And she now joins us for the first time on national radio right here on the discover of all conservative talent. Tommy Laren, welcome to the Savage Nation. God bless you. What a piece you produced. How'd you do that? Honestly, I'll tell you, it, it came from the heart, and I will stand by absolutely everything I said, because after the FBI press conference today, I think what I said rings even truer today than it did on Friday night. What do you mean, the FBI conference? Which one was that, Tommy? Talking about Chattanooga and that they're still not sure whether or not Abdulaziz was radicalized or not. And I said it in my oh. thoughts. All signs point to that. Why will not anybody come out and call it what it is? Why? We know why. But we don't have to say it here because we know exactly what's going on. We don't need to speculate why the jihadi did what he did. It's in his holy book. And the fact of the matter is he's not alone. And it's going to be another attack and another attack and another attack. And either the politicians are going to put their heads in the sand or take their heads out of the sand. Now, you come from a military family, uh, which is why I think you're so gung-ho. Uh, where were you raised, Tommy? I was raised in the heart of the Midwest in Rapid City, South Dakota. And a very conservative place, I will say. But beyond that... Yes, I have military in my family, but in my opinion, you don't have to come from military family to be an American and to support our troops. That, to me, is red, white, and blue. If you live in the United States, you should support our troops, support our armed forces, always. Tommy, tell the audience of the Savage Nation, if you will, you're, you're a new college graduate only a year out, and you became an Internet sensation, uh, and the whole world is talking about this, uh, this uh, little video you put out where you slammed Obama's lackluster fight against terrorism. What has happened in your life since then? Anything good, I hope? It has been an absolute whirlwind, to be honest with you. More surreal than I can tell you. I woke up to this 
My final thoughts, first of all, aired on One American News Network on Friday night. And I do final thoughts after every one of my shows. It's my little concluding segment where I get to wrap up my feelings for the day. I usually write them about 10 minutes before I go up to the studio. And I did that on Friday night, went through my weekend, woke up on Sunday morning, and all of a sudden my Instagram and my Twitter was exploding. And I had no idea if it was spam, what it was. And then I found out that someone posted my final thoughts to their Facebook page, recorded it from their TV, and posted it to the Facebook page. And everybody from kindergarten on up was texting me, Tommy, you're viral, you're viral. And I was shocked. Yeah, but I mean, other than I and my national show, have you been invited on any television shows? Oh, boy. Um, I have to say I've been blessed because this is resonating, so I have been contacted. Um, I was on Fox and Friends yesterday morning. Oh, good. Um, you mean the ladies on Fox and Friends weren't threatened by you? <laughs> I think we're all on the same team. So I think, I think we're all... <laughs> oh, you're very gracious. You're very gracious. There's no such thing as the same team when it comes to younger and more beautiful, but I'll let that go, Tommy. Tommy, it's your message that matters. And, you know, for the audience that doesn't know what this is about... T-O-M-I, Laren, uh, and her piece can be found. Where, where can people view it, Tommy? I think it's on michaelsavage.com, but where else is it linked? Oh, boy, Michael, it's everywhere right now. I have it on my personal YouTube channel, On Point with Tommy Laren. That's the first place that it was. I always post my final thoughts there, and it's circulating on Facebook. But I will tell you, I've heard from numerous people that Facebook has been pulling it down when people are posting it. I don't know if, again, that's to protect the sensitivity of Muslims or what it is, but I've been told that numerous times today. Oh, shame on Zuckerberg. What a disgrace he is. Uh, if he's behind that, I wouldn't doubt it, though. But let's put him aside. Uh, Tommy, you, you know, on a personal note, there's a story about you from the Daily Mail. And you're not going to, you know, that story about your boyfriend? Oh, boy, yes. I, I have seen it. Uh, it's called The One Time Intern Dating a Seal, who is the Wright's New Poster Girl, How Gun Loving, Straight Talking Tommy Laren Became the Newest Thorn in Obama's Side. But don't dare call her a bimbo. That's after they called you a bimbo, of course. Now, of course, if you came out with a viral thing about gay marriage uh, and illegal immigration and how all Muslims are coming here to help America, they wouldn't have called you a bimbo, would they? Nor would they have called you a thorn in Obama's side. Are you getting hate mail as well because of your honesty? You know what? I have to say, by and large, it's been positive. And I tend to ignore the hate mail. But yes, I've gotten a few. Everybody's got an opinion. Everyone has something to say. The first thing, as you mentioned, that they will go after is my looks. They will mention that I have blonde hair. They will mention that I am young, and that's what they choose to attack me on. But you know what? If that's the thing that you want to attack my message on is the way I look, bring it on, because that just strengthens my message. <laughs> oh, very good. You know, I got to tell you, I'm going to give you a little hint to someone who's been in the media for 21 years with very strong conservative opinions, as you uh, must know by now. I have ignored the haters for 21 years. I won't look at their messages. I consider it nothing but spam, and I throw it in the... I never see it, by the way. I never see it. There's no point in it. Let them call up uh, the comedians who support them or CNN. So where do you go from here, Tommy? What are you going to do next? Honestly, my message is the same today as it was on Friday. I will continue to hammer on this until we have a strategy in the Middle East, and I don't think that's going to happen until we get a new president in that White House. But until we have a strategy that allows our men and women to go over and fight for us, not go over and have their hands tied, not go over and be combat advisors while they watch the, the Iraqi security forces turn tail and run from ISIS, until that day, I will continue to talk about this because it's from my heart. I'm passionate about it. It's genuine, and I'm not going to stop. Tommy, you said you come from a family of Marines. You say your grandpa was a World War II paratrooper. Where did he fight? Where did he serve? Iwo Jima. And I'll actually tell you a story. That infamous flag-raising picture on Iwo Jima, my grandpa was just out of the picture frame there. And I've told the story on my show before. When we asked my grandpa when he was still alive, we said, Grandpa, you know, why weren't you in that picture? And he said, someone had to fight the Japs back while they took that picture. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. You, you say also you have an uncle, a Vietnam Purple Heart recipient. Who is he? Where is he? 
Uh, Lacey Lahren is my uncle. He was in the Marine Corps in Vietnam as well. We know a very unpopular war similar to what we're experiencing now is that our veterans come back and they're not being appreciated. He was shot in Vietnam, shot in the leg. He did receive a Purple Heart for that. And then his two sons, my two cousins, are in the Marine Corps as well, so keeping the tradition alive. My God, what an amazing family. You are as American as apple pie. We're going to have to change that. You're probably the most American young lady I've ever had on this show, Tommy. Now, tell us about your little network, uh, One American News. What is that? Who runs that? One American News. We're actually family-owned, independent network. One of the reasons I love our network is because though I love Fox News, though I love mainstream media, some aspects of it, I will say, they're all governed by money. And here at One America, we're independent. We're based in San Diego. We're owned by the Herring Networks, the Herring family. My boss sits right upstairs from me. I have conversations with him every day. He never tells me what I can and cannot say. Of course, I have to steer clear of those seven words. But other than that, I get to say my piece because we're independent and we don't have money governing us. Honest with you, we don't even have advertisements on our network. In the, where normal commercial breaks would be, we have uh, moments in history and inspirational quotes and things that direct us to this great nation. So very proud to work for One America. We're an independent voice, and nobody tells us what to do. And you're, and you're located in San Diego, correct, Tommy? Yep, that's where we're based, is here in beautiful San Diego. Again, a military town, which I'm very proud of. We also have an affiliate in Washington, D.C., a bureau right across from Capitol Hill. So we work through those two locations. We're small, but we're growing, and I think that our voice is resonating. So, Tommy, what's going to happen in your life now that you're world famous? Where are you going to go with this? Somebody other than Michael Savage is going to pick up on you. This show is heard on almost 300 stations, including the biggest stations in America. You know that you're being listened to now on a wider platform. What do you think is next? If I tried to guess what was next, I would be wrong every time, because when we start making plans, that's when God laughs at us. But to be honest with you, this isn't about money for me. I have gotten several requests, people wanting to talk to me. I'm happy to talk to anyone that would like to speak with me because it's the message that's important, but I'm still going to do the exact same things I do every day. This viralness will die out, but I will continue to have the same message, and we're just going to have to wait and see where it goes. I'm 22, so the future is wide open. Well, the future maybe is hopeful for America because I know one thing, Tommy, you're not alone amongst the 20-something generation. Although the media would like to have us believe they're all into random sex and uh, hating America and throwing fetuses in the toilet, the opposite happens to be true, Tommy. And I think you represent more of America's future than less of it. Tommy, one last question for me. The name Tommy is sort of a boy's name, but it isn't. Is it a Finnish extraction, T-O-M-I? What is that? T-O-M-I, Tommy Laren, that's my given name. And I always introduce myself like Tommy, like the boy's name. My given name, my parents wanted to be different. I used to hate the name, but now when I introduce myself, <laughs> I say, yeah, I have a boy's name, but you're never going to forget it. And that seems to be true now because it's hard to forget the girl named Tommy. Oh, so it's not of any European uh, language. It's just that you were called Tommy as a girl, so you spelled it T-O-M-I. Yep, my parents named me that, you know, August 11th, 1992. I was named Tommy. I wanted to be different, wanted to have a different name. So it's about as American as they come, I can tell you that much. Well, all I can say is, uh, America, look out. Here comes Tommy Laren. Tommy, thanks for being with us on the Savage Nation. I wish you the greatest success in all of your media endeavors. And by the way, your boyfriend is an American hero. God bless both of you. God bless America. Thank you so much for getting that message out here. And we can't let this movement die. we got to keep it going for all of our men and women. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. 46 minutes after the hour, you're listening to Michael Savage. And just remember the name of that young lady. You heard her first on the Savage Nation. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Well, all I can say after having the 22-year-old, you can turn it off now, Tommy Laren on. If you missed it, boy, you missed something. Conservative Anchor 22 became a viral star with her passionate message against Obama's, her heated speech about her, the president's half-baked ISIS policy. It's been viewed nearly two million times. Excuse me, you sneeze on the truth nearly two million times. 
and she's amazing. I guess they call people like her a firecracker more than that. All I can say is I hope our Navy SEALs make our enemies the Navy's meals. And that's the last word from the Savage Nation. Don't I sound official when I do it that way? It's like an official broadcaster. That is so not me. That is so not me. I could do that regular stuff. But, man, she's good. I really hope that her career takes off. I, my, my feeling is Fox will never t touch her. They'll have her on as a guest as they did, but the girls will definitely not be, I mean, they'll be threatened by her. She's younger, period. They're not going to go for it. You know, they're all watching their backs. And the one thing uh, that people in the in the movie business fear is the younger, the younger starlet. So whether it's news or entertainment, it's still the movie business. Never forget it's News Corporation. I mean, never forget that. I'm not knocking Fox News. They do the best job on, on, on television of news, the best. But they're in the entertainment business with news mixed in like all of them are. And they've got a lot of office politics and uh, Martha Washington's not gonna let her on the network. It's the same reason I'm not allowed on Fox News because they know I would spin them in circles. They don't let me go near them. They'd rather have a terrorist on than Michael Savage. To their own uh, loss, I could care less. It doesn't matter to me. I mean, I don't care what Roger Ailes thinks of me. It doesn't matter to me. I don't know, derive a nickel from them. But the thing is, she is not going to make it on Fox. She'll never be picked up by CNN. I don't know what her future might be. I have no idea, you know, in, in the world in which we live. I don't know if I were that age and I got this start. By the way, I found out she did grow up listening to talk radio. Robert said that Robert Borowski might... Am I allowed to give out your last name or you have fears that someone will get to know you? Uh, they, when, he, when he booked her at my request, he spoke to the production people and uh, said, oh, she loves the Savage Nation. I didn't, I didn't make that a litmus test. Notice I didn't ask her, do you know the Savage Nation? Did you grow up listening to it? I didn't pander to her, to myself rather. And I just let that go. But he said, oh, no, she grew up loving your show. You're one of the inspirations for her patriotism. So I've had an impact on the young. It's why I put together the Savage, the Savage Scholarship Fund. And uh, I hope to continue it. I don't know if I'll have the energy for it next year. I'm going to try. Let's just get this over with. Let's get through the year. Let's get through the summer. Uh, let's get through uh, my teeth cleaning. I got to do that every summer. I never have my teeth cleaned in the winter. I don't go near a dental office in the winter when the flu germs are around. I wait for the dead, the doldrums of August when no one's around and all of the children are gone. You know, it's kind of smart to have your teeth cleaned in August. The children with flu are gone. No one is sick. I have to get through that before I can make decisions about my future. It's worse than a colonoscopy to me, which I'm not going to have again. I will not have that kielbasa approach me again. They will not put that kielbasa in me ever again. Ever. No. Last thing I saw was the kielbasa. That's it. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Yeah, 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 yeah. Crossing all the borders just to take their share. Well, I changed that line to crossing all the borders just to take our share. Welcome to the Savage Nation. And the news is so rotten that I had that young 22-year-old conservative author on in the last hour, Tommy Laren, who has her own little web TV show, one little show, Viewed over two million times, and she was something. I mean, when I said I learned your grandfather was a paratrooper, I said, where? And she said, well, in Iwo Jima. And then she said, I got an interesting story to tell you, which I never heard. I didn't read it anywhere because no one knows her. I mean, she's new. She said, well, when Grandpa was alive, he said, I was just outside the frame of that famous Iwo Jima picture. So I said, Grandpa, why weren't you in the picture? And he said, well, someone had to fight the you-know-whats while they were taking the picture. Now, well, could you imagine having a grandfather like that? What, a, what an amazing American story 
She's got to be on the FBI, CIA, DHS uh, watch list now. I'm convinced that uh, Jay Johnson's put her on the watch list because any true American goes immediately on the uh, suspicion list uh, along with all the U.S. Marines and Navy SEALs being watched around the clock by our uh, intelligence uh, services. Obama said he didn't target the Tea Party. The VA has gotten better under him. Pathological liar. And uh, where would he choose to do it but Comedy Central? Only the stoners would find that funny. Then he uses that uh, the Judenrat Use the Judenrat show to go on. Would have ushered the children into the chambers. Yeah, all right. I, I don't want to get negative. I feel too good. I started out feeling awful today. Uh, by the way, you're listening to a radio show called The Savage Nation. It's national. It went viral 20 years ago. <laughs> I, I love when they say it went viral. That's like a new thing. Oh, it went viral. What does that mean? It means nothing. There's no, no meaning to the it went viral. You don't make any money on that. Zero. How do you monetize it went viral? What, what do you put it on your wall? Listen, Mama, my YouTube of me getting undressed in the shower went viral. Three and a half million people watched it. And now when are you going to get a job? So, but okay, in her case, a different story. I hope it leads to a career in the media. I, I would have her on as a fill-in, but this is not easy to do. Impossible to do if you're 22. No one could fill in for me in that age bracket. Because radio's, you know, it's three hours. Think about that. 12 segments in three hours. That's four segments an hour of long periods of time that you have to do ex, ex, extemporaneous conversation with an audience you can't see. Not easy to do unless you have experience, a wide knowledge, you know what I'm saying, and a way to keep it going, sustaining, sustaining. And luckily for me, I started out bad today. I was really running hot Monday and Tuesday. I'm just doing a third hour thing. I'm warm up the third hour differently now. For those of you who stay with me the whole three hours, probably 12 people out of the millions who listen, stay with me the whole three hours. Are you a three-hour listener? Is there anyone out there who listens to my whole three hours? I want to hear from you. Clear a little of the board off. I want to get the, the true believers to call. I mean, does anyone listen to the show anymore? Three full hours. You got one? Got a live one on the hook? No, not yet. It's too soon because it's a 30-second delay. I'm the only one in the media with such a long delay. Can you imagine? That's an indicator of how hot the show really is. In case I say something that I shouldn't say, which is all day long for three hours. Started out bad. Monday and Tuesday, I was hot as fire. I did great shows. Like yesterday was amazing, going from the, the rock and roll music to the Horst Vessel song to show you the connection between drug, sex, rock and roll, and where we're at, and then the abortion. I, I can't do the abortion thing. I get sick thinking of killing the babies and the infants. I can't do it. It makes me sad. I really can't take it. So I'll admit I had too many drinks last night from the depressing news I was dealing with. I had two drinks. But I had Gilby's Vodka. I think that's what did it. I went to like the Cheesecake Factory. I never go in that place. They're so like not me. But I was walking around with the dog and it was hot. I just didn't want to face the rest of the night. I went in because they have a cheap uh, happy hour, like five bucks for this, five bucks for that, five dollar drinks. I mean, All right, I'll go cheap. But I normally only, I, call, I have a call vodka thing. I have call. I call for it. But it was like $12. This was five I economize where I can. I'm not a poor man, but I'm frugal. I'm the frugal talker. That's what I am. And I got a hangover like you cannot believe. I had the appetizers disgusting. Horrible, man. It was like the Vietnamese spring rolls with that limpy paper wrapper that must have come out. I don't know how they made that thing. It, you know, I figured out it's not fried. I said to the girl, give me the one thing on the appetizer that's not fried. They gave me the Vietnamese spring rolls in some wheat jacket or rice paper jacket. I don't know what it was. It felt like it was parchment upon which uh, the, the Declaration of Independence was written and then rendered uh, moist again by being dipped in water. And I know it was no good because I gave the dog a piece of the jacket. You can't give him like the appetizer food. I know that, you know, and there was no spice on it because I cleansed it in a glass of water. I gave it to Teddy because he was begging from the bottom of the stool. Another reason I don't like the place is you're on a stool. You're too high up. It gives you a, a distorted sense of reality. I like to sit on a, like a chair when I'm drinking and eating, where I'm only two, three feet off the floor. Because as you drink, your perceptions change anyway. So if you're like four feet off the floor, you feel like you're in a parachute looking down after a while. And the dog's down there, and he's small to begin with. He disappeared altogether. Sitting there giving me the eyes. How could I resist? I gave him the jacket. Threw up in the morning on a nice rug, a puker, and I didn't lie. I mean, it's like horrible. You know what that's like six o'clock in the morning when the sun comes through the curtains? 
and the first thing you have to do is clean up dog vomit on a beautiful carpet, a hand-woven carpet from, I think, Mexico or Guatemala or Honduras. It was awful. That was the first thing. I got mad at him. Then I didn't get mad at him. I said, I'm sorry, people get sick too. Go, do your thing. I put him outside in the grass. He looked at me like I was crazy. Like, what are you, nuts? I already threw up what I have to go outside for. I already did what I wanted to do on your carpet. He wouldn't even go on the grill. You ever do that with a dog? They're, they're really weird dogs. Like after they do something in the house, they go, get out, man. Go on the grass and do it. And they roll over in the wet grass and look at you with the feet up like in submission. <laughs> I didn't mean to let me back in the house. Please, I hate the cold. I hate the wet. I don't want to be out of here. So I picked the poor guy up and put him back on his bed. And uh, he was good the rest of the day. And no, I did not give him any of the other areas he hears me. He's very sensitive. Teddy, we're not joking about you. I gave him none of the Chinese, but I feel great right now because I had a Chinese lunch or two delivered, hot. Uh, I swore off this place a month ago. I said, I'll never eat that garbage again. I just ate that garbage again. And I had an energy drink. I was really dragging it. It was all of that stuff in it that, that's supposedly not good for me. It's great. It's wonderful. I feel terrific. Look at, look at how good I'm doing. Third hour, the third hour flying along. Here we are. Talking about Ayatollah Obama's uh, actions, his latest actions. Doubling down on illegal aliens coming in. They ran a computer model on how they could destroy America as rapidly as possible. And they're following every portion of that computer model. Lie to them about global warming. Tax them. Uh, you know, I'll go down the list. I don't have the mind for it right now. Oh, here's one. Here's a, here's a, a regular. Nathan on KSFO Radio in San Francisco. Welcome, Nathan. What's on your mind? No, I just want to say thank you for everything you do. And believe it or not, I'm one of these weird people. I sell meat door to door. I've done it for 20 years. I've done it all over the western United States. And I find you wherever you're at on the radio. And you are on nonstop. I got my wife that listens to you every day. She's a chef. And you're absolutely the most amazing person. And just to speak to you is the biggest pleasure I think I've ever had in my life. To be Oh, with. come on. Nathan, what do you mean you deliver meat door to door? How does that work? I go up to people's doors. I have a truck with a little freezer in the back. I, I have awesome steaks, and I go up there and say, hey, sorry to bother you. I just met. Wow. I mean, so you actually have to go sell it like that, right? There's no advanced sale? I support four little kids. I've never gotten no assistance from no one. I do it wow. all myself. Every day, I knock on a new door. And what kind of meat is it? Beef? Yeah, all big steak, chicken, seafood, pork, you name it. Everything. What, what's the name of your company? I'll give you a you plug know, for I, nothing. I, I work for myself. I'm an independent. I'm kind of like a rogue. That's why I love you so much. I love yeah, but you Nathan, like hold on. I, I'm going to do this for you. I got nothing in this. No skin in the game. You're in the San Francisco area. What's the name of your company? Throw it out there. I'm in Sacramento, and I work for a company called The Butcher Shop. Good. Okay, all you listeners out there, in addition to all my regular sponsors, I want you to buy meat from the butcher shop. <laughs> you know, I was once, a, Nathan, I was once a, a meat delivery boy. Have you heard me talk about that? I've heard you talk about everything under the sun, Mike. I really have. I, I enjoy it. My wife is a chef. My wife actually made it on this last season of MasterChef. She was the first one kicked off, Jill Campbell. And she was Whoa. amazing. Amazing you if see? you watch Matt. So you're a, you're a real American working family, and you know what uh, Ayatollah Obama is trying to do to this country. You don't, you don't, don't even get me started. I, I wouldn't even, I could sit here all day, and I'm not an intelligent person I, at all. I'm one of these guys that grew up, barely got through school, wanted to surf, be stoned, but I will say this. I'm more intelligent than all these kids that go to school nowadays that have that go to college. I Listen, don't confuse intelligence with don't confuse intelligence with brainwashing, uh, Nathan. You are an intelligent man. You're just not formally educated. So, Nathan, I'm going to send you a book for the summer reading when you get to go to uh, Cannes, France, on your vacation, along with uh, John Kerry and Barack Obama. It's Countdown to Mecca. You can read it on the beach uh, in uh, in Nice. Stay on the line, Nathan. That's a three hour listener. WBAP, Dallas, Texas. Trent, you're next up. What's on your mind, Trent? What's uh, what's what's happening there, Trent? Let me tell you, man. I listen to you three hours a day, and by the time I get home, I'm ready to fire missiles at my wife. <laughs> to, to her chagrin. Wait, 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 wait. Hold it. That went that went over my head. You listen to me for three hours, and you get home, you're ready to fire what at your wife? 
I'm locked and loaded with so much information that I'm blowing my my my. my I, I got scared. I thought it was a dirt. I thought it was sort of a, you know, an, uh, a little uh, blue remark there. I I couldn't follow it from a fire missiles at your wife. I mean, what was that like? Something I'd never heard when I was a kid. Uh, you know, you know, it's just just it, I'm over o overwhelmed with all the information that I learned during. Ah, the thank God that was close. <laughs> that was close. No, so, so is your wife a conservative like yourself in Dallas or a lib? That's a good question. That's a, she is. A, she is a fiscal conservative, but she is uh, liberal with her uh, her views. Social, social, right? That that's very common in America. Yeah, yeah. and it's it's why it's why conservatives shouldn't get into the social issues, even though that's the uh, <laughs> the crux of conservatism in many ways. Many people say, "Well, I'm a fiscal conservative, but I don't want." the uh, right wingers telling me what I can do with my body and there's nothing you can do about that <laughs> nothing That's going and, and I suggest if you don't want to sleep on the couch Trent you uh you know you toe the line there thanks for listening <laughs> BAP. I can't believe the time is racing by here this is horrendous how could it be 19 minutes after the hour already and how could I be in the third hour of a day I didn't think I could get through the show I swear to God I was in the shower before the show I go to the I, I have a lot of home studios, I told you that. And uh, I now take, I, I used to take showers just before the show to run water on my head and my body, certain areas that, and I ran the water on my head. I said, I can't do the show today. I just don't feel good. In the old days, I would have called in and thrown in a towel out of fill and host. I had a rule, if you don't feel 100%, don't do the show, you'll make a mistake and regret it. But I don't do that anymore. I go on like a trooper. I do the show, I do the show, I do the show. I do it like an immigrant just off the boat. And so I ran the water, I ran the water, I ran the water. I did what I used to do when I was a young weightlifter, go from hot to cold. You start with a hot shower on the head, on the back of the head, the areas you don't want to talk about on radio. You singe them, and then you turn on the cold, slowly cold, till it's freezing. It worked somewhat. It wasn't until I had the bad Chinese food and the energy drink. Uh, and then I took, I made a little error. I did something I did in the 70s when I was writing nutrition books. I was feeling so good, I went and took a mega dose of B vitamins, like a B complex of 75. It's coming up. I can't stand the taste. It's all a yeast in there. It's disgusting. That's the one thing I did wrong. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. And it's Rock and Roll Wednesday on the Savage Nation. We're playing a few tunes for you here right up until the uh, end of this hour. When the show is taken over by an unknown, actually, I'm finished, and I don't know what to do with myself. I only have 30 more minutes of broadcast time. I could be on three more hours. This is not good. Welcome to the show. If you've been listening to the show for 15, 20 years, you know what I'm into. Uh, up and down, my emotions change. In other words, I'm an average human being like you. Oh, no, I'm supposed to be like one feeling the whole day. Who has that, old? Who, what person is like that? I live near the water. I watch the tides, I watch the birds, I watch the seals, I watch the leaves, I watch the wind, I watch the bugs, I watch the butterflies. It's the end of tomato season already out here. I'm a natural man. I planted the uh, tomatoes in February, early March. It's already late summer here. Well, mid-July, it's late. The leaves are starting to turn. I've been plucking the tomatoes. I, it's like summer's half over, you know that by the tomatoes. I watch the seasons through nature. And I watch politics through the eyes of a natural man. And believe me, I know what's going on. I know just what's going on. And I know what Ayatollah Obama's doing to this country. I know what all of them are trying to do to this country. Anyhow, here we are. I've been a fan of Michael Sadge for 15 years. And until now, it was the radio show and several books on politi political discourse. I had no idea he's such a great fiction writer. Even though this book... Countdown to Mecca has its roots in reality and current day events. He wove an excellent story in which I had no trouble visualizing the venues and characters, especially the dangers of radical Islam. An important fictional book that I highly recommend from Just the Guy on July 9th, 2015 on Amazon. So Countdown to Mecca is a supply. It's a sleeper. Although banned by the media and blocked by the New York Times from the bestseller list, 
The book is an important book and it's selling. The publisher is quite surprised. Everything from biological weapons to Russia's fight with terrorists to short lessons on Islam's actual teachings. It rivals the late Tom Clancy's books. But it's the last Jack Hatfield series. Countdown to Mecca. Get it for summer reading. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. All right. Yeah, if this group became like the leadership of America, we'd be better shaped than with Ayatollah Obama in the office. All I can say is I hope our Navy SEALs make our enemies the Navy's meals. But uh, with this commander in grief, I kind of doubt it. Yeah, with this commander in grief, uh, we don't know which side he's on. We don't know whose side he's playing for, especially after the Iran deal. You'd have to be blind. You'd have to be deaf, dumb, and blind, or let's say Bill Maher or whatever that guy's name is, Zuckerberg. What's his real name, Zuckerberg? What's his real name? I don't know his name. Mark Stewart. Mark Zuckerberg. John Zuckerberg Stewart. You'd have to be one of those types to not see what's really going on. I got to read something to you. I really do. I'm in a weird mood. I'm thinking. I, I was going to say 18 things at once right now. My brain is overcooking. At, my V12 is finally functioning. It's running at full efficiency. It's like Wilhelm the engine right now. You know, I still have that car. Those of you who read the first Jack Hatfield novel, remember I called uh, Jack's car. It was a Mercedes uh, S600 V12. I, he called it Wilhelm. That was my car. I still own it. And I bought it in new in 08. I can't sell the thing. I'm almost embarrassed that it's five years old. How old is it? 09, 09. Why am I embarrassed? The car runs better than new. I don't want to be like an old guy in an old Mercedes. They, I never liked the way those guys looked. It's not a good look. But the car is so good, it's flawless. It looks new, but I'm an American. I need a new car. I don't want a new car, but I need a new car. I don't need a new car. I don't even want a new car. But like an E-Series, it costs more now than my old S600 series. I can't believe our car drops in value. It was like 150 grand new. It's like worth thirty thousand dollars. How is that even possible? Why is it only worth twenty five or thirty thousand dollars on a trade in when it's better than most cars that cost double that amount new? Anyway, I don't want to go on and about cars, but that's one thing bothering me. Getting my teeth cleaned is another thing. Having to have a colonoscopy again. It's been eight, ten years now. I don't really want it, but Katie Couric said I have to. <laughs> have to. I don't know if I'm ever going to do that again. I had that five years ago. I'm never going to go through that again. Colon, I must have it. You have to have it. It's like saying I have to have cholesterol drugs. I, I don't have to have them. My, my numbers are upside down. And uh, I took the, the, the lipid to My legs almost didn't work. Poisons the muscles. So, no, I'm not taking that. I'm going to check that off. I'm not doing the colonoscopy. I can't take it again. The kielbasa, that was it. Seeing that kielbasa come at me, that was... That was the last straw. I just, certain things I can't submit to. It's like, oh, don't focus on this. Just look at the TV screen. I said, what is that thing? I mean, I may live in San Francisco, but I really don't like this procedure. No, anyway, I don't think I'm going to go. <laughs> and I don't know. Is it really overrated? I'm not so sure that it's as important. You know, how many procedures, medical procedures today in 20 or 30 years are going to look back and say, oh, the people are crazy. Realize what they did in, the, in those years? They, did, they took these drugs that poisoned their legs, but they kept taking them anyway. Oh, they had cholesterol tests, and it turns out cholesterol is good for you. It wasn't really that big. Uh, then they put this thing in themselves that looked like a salami, a small midget salami, to look inside their colon. But it turned out that it actually sometimes caused more damage than it saved because they clipped and caused uh, bleeding and perforated the bowel, but they did it anyway. It reminds me of... In the late 1800s, 1890, in England, do you, you're not going to believe there's a true medical story. One of the medical procedures that the rich engaged in, I'm not making this up, check it out. They thought it was as important as all these things in those days. They didn't like fecal matter. They thought it was dirty. Well, it is. But they didn't like the fact that although they were rich and powerful and lived in mansions, they were just like the poor in one regard. They were human. And they didn't like the fact that they had to go to the bathroom. I swear to God, there was a fad amongst the very rich in England of having their lower, lower bowel removed and a bag put on their side, like a rubber bag, whatever they use, synthetic and those. There were no synthetics to collect the, the waste and dispose of it in a less uh, animalistic way. I swear to you, something that poor people today with a colon surgery have to have. 
terrible thing. I had a friend. Uh, I wish he was around. I liked him. I think his name was Norman or Marty. I knew him 30 years ago. He fought in Korea, had his gut shot out at the Chosin Reservoir. One of the greatest men I ever... Where is he? Are you a listener somewhere in America? Where are you? You know, I look back now on my life. There was certain... I don't know what it is. I'm thinking about people I knew I don't know anymore who I really liked. I don't know where they went. It's not like they died. I don't know where they are. Like, you move on in life. You forget. You move on. You move away. You know, do you ever think back about, like, people you knew when you were in college or high school? Look, high school, I know where they are. College, sort of know where they are. Then it's a sort of a blur. I don't know where the people are. I met some amazing guys along the way. I don't know where they are. Sometimes I wish that they were around, that we can get together and just have a good time. You can't do it. You know why? You're not a kid anymore. And you can't go home again. It was written a long time ago. You can't go home again. There's no home to go to. And the day you realize that you can't go home again, what does home mean? What is it? It's a metaphor. What do you mean you can't go home again? Great novel, but what does it mean you can't go home again? It means that you can't live in the past. And you can't hang on to being a child. And you have to go forward like a Marine. You've got to step forward in your life and take chances and hope for the best. It's that simple at the end of the day. So... I was looking through a passage in Countdown to Mecca, and I'm looking what people like, which character they like. You know who they like the most? My new character, Saul Minsky, the Jewish gangster, who turns out to be more patriotic than most of our governmental uh, uh, service members today. And so in the book, Countdown to Mecca, I have a paragraph I want to read to you, one of the dialogues. The upper echelons of the United States military, from the president down through the entire general staff, had forgotten their collective duty. They had grown soft and indecisive in their misguided desire for peace at any cost, satisfied to let the tide of Islam slowly envelop the world. How many Middle Eastern governments would have to fall to Muslim extremists before America's leaders woke up and realized the folly of their peaceful ambitions? First, the Egyptian government had been overthrown and taken over by Hamas. Then Gaddafi was deposed with the help of American air support, only to see Al-Qaeda move in and set up house. And now it looked as though Syria would be the next to fall. Ashlock believed that something bold and decisive had to be done to cauterize the growing malignancy of Islam. And since no one in the upper echelons of any Western government possessed the resolve to take this decisive action, it appeared that he would have to do it for them. This is the plot, the essence of the plot. These are the generals plotting this evil thing that Jack tries to stop. It's all in Countdown to Mecca. It's a sleeper. The book is continuing to sell, and I hope you'll check it out. I really do. People really like uh, Countdown to Mecca. You know, the publisher wants me to do the next one. I don't want to do a fourth. I can't do it. I got you. you got to play a piece of Tommy for everyone. The young lady I had on in the last hour, in case you missed it, Tommy Larry. You have the beginning of it? I just caught him napping there behind. I, I run these guys so hard, it's frightening. I, one is napping. The other one is a... No, they were, since I got Skype, they can't get away with it anymore. In the old days, I had no idea what the producer and the call screener was doing. Now I see their every move. The camera's right over. It's like Big Brother. I feel like the NSA looking in on them in Dallas. Robert, drink that energy drink right now and find that piece for me on Tommy uh, Laren. I want to play it right now. You found Four it? Four United States energy. Marines are now dead. Climate change didn't kill them. Lack of free community college didn't kill them. The income gap, wage inequality, nope, not those things either. Gay marriage, nope. Oh, white racism, not that either. So what did? President Obama, if you won't say it, I will. Radical Islam. This is not workplace violence. This is not a criminal act with motives unknown. This is terrorism. The suspected shooter, Mohammed Abdulaziz, a devout Muslim. Do I care that he seemed like an all-American young man? Do I care that he was good at mixed martial arts or a smart, quiet guy? Do I care that his high school friends wouldn't classify him as overly religious? No, I don't give a flying you-know-what about any of that. Was he linked to ISIS or Al-Qaeda or Hamas or any of the other 15 plus offshoot terrorist groups, does it matter? I'm sorry, but radical Islam is becoming the rule, not the exception. Yesterday's moderate is today's terrorist. I care that this SOB killed four of our United States Marines, and I care that our commander in chief is more concerned with Muslim sensitivity than the honor and sacrifice made by these Marines. Now, this is the 21st time our military men and women have been attacked here at home. This is not a Middle East problem. This is an American problem, and I'm sorry, but I can't sit here and let this go. Not anymore. I come from a family of Marines. My grandpa was a World War II paratrooper. My uncle, a Vietnam Purple Heart recipient. My cousins, both Marine Corps officers. I have some very close Navy SEAL now, connections let's pause as well. right there. That's the young In lady, fact, 22 years old, Tommy Laren, who I had on the show. 
Uh, and it's amazing. I mean, she did this on her own, a little TV show she has in uh, San Diego. I'm not doing this for any reason other than I tell you, I, I have hope that I saw with the scholarship fund, the patriotic essays I got on what it means to be an American. Here's a 22-year-old young lady. She's not alone. I want, if you're young, for you to understand you're not alone. One of the techniques of the radical left in the, in the universities to make you feel marginalized, to make you feel ostracized, to make you feel ashamed to be an American, especially if you're a white young lady, they want to make you feel bad. And if you're a white young man, they want to make you feel that you stole what you have and your ancestors were all bad. Well, don't fall for that garbage. Take pride in yourself. Stand up to the multicultural fascists everywhere you go. Play the game and play it well, my friends. That's all I can say to you. There's so much more I'm going to say to you over the next, on uh, the coming days, weeks, and months with God's help. And, uh, you know, it's a day-to-day -day thing. It's a day-to-day -day thing. It's a struggle to get up here every day and form your thoughts and pull the news together and pull your heart together and your mind together. And at the same time, you're thinking about, well, posterity. What am I going to leave behind? Oh, a lot of recordings, a lot of YouTubes, journals, books. What does it really matter? Does anyone remember the past? Does anyone remember last minute, let alone last week, last month? What, are the, what do people mean by posterity anymore? I, I got to go into this for a minute. I think this is as good a time as any. You know, I've always written things down. I've tried to as much as possible. I've kept journals since 1963 in a box. And World Net Daily is going to be publishing my there's so many things coming out all at once. I'm working on five different projects at once, which is great it's to be so alive. And so I, I hate to use the word, but blessed by God with the energy and good fortune to be able to work so hard every day of my life to have this happen because it wasn't just given to me. I work at it and I work at it hard and I love working at it. It keeps me sound and it keeps me sane and it keeps me focused and it makes me get out of that bed the days I don't want to get out of that bed. I could have laid in bed today and say, oh look, I don't feel good, the vodka stank, I, I have a headache, call in, get a fill-in host, but I didn't. The show must go on, shower, energy drink, whatever I had to use and here I am so happy. And I'm thinking back and I'm saying, well, what am I gonna leave behind? What's the point? I wrote all these journals, who really gives a damn? So I found pictures finally World Net Daily's publishing them come next winter. The, the Secret Journals of Michael Savage. It'll, it'll be the first volume, 63 to 69. It's unbelievable what happened in my life from the time I graduated college to uh, from the time I entered college to the time I graduated college. What a big time in my life. The volume two will be even better. It's when I got married and had a child and, and left America and went to Hawaii, which wasn't like America to me especially since we know who was born there. But it really wasn't like, nevertheless, that's, that's ahead of myself. And I have the big book coming out in, in, in October from the same people who gave you Stop the Coming Civil War, Government Zero. And the photographers, listen to this now, wait. I'm I, eight thoughts at once now. The V12 is running, it's humming, you know. The, the, the publisher is coming out this Friday with a photographer who specializes in photographing dogs why because i have a dog book coming out too along the way listen to this one they didn't like the i didn't like the cover they did for government zero so they they're rushing out a photographer to do new ones and i said look i'm not doing a studio photography i will not sit still for it so no makeup man no nothing see so he he's a natural he does natural photography it's gonna be friday night in a certain restaurant i'm not gonna say where and i'm bringing teddy because in addition to photographing me they're already planning the next book. They're going to photograph the cover for the, me and the dog, for the dog book. Can you believe this? And then Saturday morning, because he likes natural light, right? So I'm thinking, like, what a fun thing that's going to be, the dog pictures. Teddy eating a hamburger in a restaurant, sitting in a chair at a, a plate. Teddy and me walking down the street and him visiting his dog friends that he runs into, like there's a pug he likes. They fight over who can pee on the bush for <laughs> it's unbelievable. There's another one. I mean, so many different dog pictures I'm thinking of that I want to do. One of the things I like to do with Teddy in the morning is uh, I live on a cul-de-sac in one of my locations. And in the morning, he looks forward to it. I, you know, do all my stuff, get on a bike. He starts to go, oh, yeah, 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 come on, Dad. And I say, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. And he runs across the street. And then I bicycle on the, on the, in the street. He, buys, he runs down the sidewalk in the loop. 
and he goes slowly. He can't miss a blade of grass. He can't miss a bush. He can't miss a pole. Everything he has to mark. I don't know where the water comes from. I, I think it's a, I don't think that he has red blood in his veins. I think he has urine in his veins. There's no other explanation for the amount of liquid that this dog can disperse in a 10 minute uh, run. I don't understand it. It's, a, it's an act of God. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. When uh, there was that problem with the IRS, everybody jumped, including you. What happened with the IRS? Look, look, you got this, uh, you got this right, back office, and, and they're show. going after the Turn Tea Party. Off. Turn him off. Ayatollah Obama appears on the government jester show and tries to say there was no IRS targeting of conservatives and gets away with the big lies with the government jester. Yeah, you know, what, what can I say to you? It's sickening. It, it's, it's sickening. It's, it's fortune cookie time in the last minute of the show. I had two Chinese meals for lunch. Let's see what the first says. Oh, it's upside down. You will enjoy doing something different this coming weekend. Yeah, right. Okay. And since I had two meals... Can you hear a crackling, Robert? Did it crack? I never eat this garbage. It's full of lard. Uh, traveling to the East will bring you great rewards. Oh, I'm going to go to New York, maybe. Maybe I'll visit New York, broadcast from WABC, go down to the deli, go up to the Chinese, go up to the Italian, visit Mulberry Street, go out to Queens and see my old attached house, go to the graveyards and see my ancestors, and think about the eternal and what we leave behind. Because never forget, none of us, even those in talk radio who think we are, are immortal. Never forget that somebody up there watches us every second of the day. And on that proud note, I say good night and good luck.